All right, so today was a double feature night, which kind of was planning. Um, I was iffy on seeing Mortal Engines, but definitely was going to see Spider-Man into the Spider-Verse. And <clears throat> right off the bat, if you like Spider-Man, if you like Marvel, if you just like animated movies, lots of action, stuff like that, go see this movie. It's a great movie. It's an amazing movie. <laughs> Uh, it's worth every dollar, every penny, every peso, every single franc, quid, pound that you could give to it. It's worth every single pixel they used to create it. It is, I mean, there was a lot of buzz going around from the critics and everything. I mean, it has high Rotten Tomatoes ratings. Uh, even the critics like it. They're even calling it, you know, best animated movie of the year, which probably might be, <laughs> um... It's definitely, I, I mean, okay, granted, I do have a little bit more of a bias uh, with Marvel stuff and Spider-Man especially, uh, but definitely, I think it's just overall a better movie than uh, Incredibles 2. I mean, really, there wasn't that many animated movies that came out this year anyway, so it's, I mean, I think Incredibles 2 is probably the top contender uh, besides, you know, some foreign films and some small, short films and everything, but they're in a different category, so short films don't count. Uh, but, man, um, uh, so I've read, of course, <clears throat> uh, the Spider-Verse series in the comics, and, <clears throat> excuse me, dealing with the throat stuff still from being sick, but, yeah, man, like, so finally we get a movie where Miles Morales is the center of attention, which they take a lot of, uh, cues from the Ultimate Comics, which a lot of the Marvel movies pretty much take a lot of cues from Ultimate Comics, just because a lot of times they usually usually put them in the same age range. I mean, it makes sense. They're supposed to be designed for more younger, more, you know, modern senses, where you know, with all the reboots and everything, kind of have messed around with them a little too much in some ways, but um, they do go a lot closer to Ultimate series. So, with that being said, but they're still using the Spider Verse storylines. Granted, they're not using the same baddie because now it's more Kingpin uh, as the big baddie in here. And of course, he has his own group of minions, and they're interestingly designed. They're very cool designs. Uh, for you know, there's Scorpion in here. There's uh, you know, Green Goblin, which the Green Goblin looks very similar to. Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, Miles Morales' Green Goblin, which is this giant, hulking, you know, goblin creature. Not so much, you know, a guy in a suit with superpowers and stuff, but yeah, it's <clears throat> it's pretty cool. And the Spider-Man you get is pretty. Uh, if you've read the Ultimate Spider-Man, uh, you kind of know what happens to that Peter Parker. And the thing I like about this movie is that each. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, each Spider-Man is introduced in like this quick little like comic book quip, you know, insert where they, you know they just literally cut to these comics just laying down. And they just throw a new one down. It's like, oh, here's you know Spider-Man Noir. Here's uh, you know the the what's her name, the the Japanese Spider Girl. Uh, you know, here's Spider Gwen. Here's uh, Spider Pig. Here's you know this Spider-Man. Here's the other Spider-Man. Here's you know, all these other, every time they introduce a new Spider-Man, you know, you get a new comic, you get this cool little design, which the whole movie is, has this uh, very, you know, Steve Ditko old Marvel style where they use a lot of uh, cost efficiency of colors where they would do a lot of dots. Uh, I believe it's early, like, 60s that they did that often. Uh, even before that, probably, actually, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, so it's, you know, it's interesting to watch this movie because it will seem like you need 3D glasses at times, but that's just because they want you to focus on certain things. So they blur out, you know, things that are not important, which you get used. I mean, I didn't have too much of a problem with it. Um, I, you know, I've been watching the trailers and everything, so I got used to it really quickly. Uh, I think some people that haven't been keeping up with it and don't know about it, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure there was a couple of people, like, were saying something when they first saw it. They're like, why does that look like that, you know, they had a little trouble, and then they got used to it, so, 
it takes a second. Plus, the motion isn't uh, as smooth as most animated movies. I believe they do these on twos, kind of like how a uh, anim like a draw hand drawn animation would be. <clears throat> so they're a little bit more rigid and quicker. You know, they're not as smooth with 24 fl frames. They're 12 frames, I believe, a second. If I remember from some of the videos I heard uh, and watched about you know the making of this movie, but yeah, man, everything, it's, <clears throat> I'm kind of jumping around all over the place because that's, <laughs> there's a lot to talk about in this movie and I don't want to spoil much about it uh, because it's a great movie. It's probably the best Spider-Man movie, in my honest opinion, uh, and probably might be for a while. And I do like the designs of the characters, uh, the designs of the suits, the different Spider-Mans that they use, I think worked really well. Uh, I think the only, yeah, I mean, really they pretty much hit the most popular ones, the people, ones at least people recognize the most, uh, besides, okay, I guess a little bit of a spoiler, besides, you know, Spider-Man 20, 2099, you know, he wasn't part of the group, so, but, yeah, you get five Spider-Mans, and, two, well, three Spider-Mans, two Spider-Girls, <laughs> or Spider-Women, and... Miles Morales, of course, learning his becoming Spider-Man, which is really cool to see because uh, that happens in, you know, the Ultimate Fallout, Ultimate Series, where he gets, you know, he pretty much has his powers when, you know, Peter Parker. Well, spoiler in the comics, also a little bit of a spoiler in the movie, um, which I don't know if it's that much of a spoiler in the movie because if you read the comics about Miles Morales, you kind of know what happens to Peter Parker, but... Yeah, so Miles has this pretty big guilt trip about what happens, and you know he has these powers, and it's just like you know he has this guilt trip because he felt like he could help, and he didn't, he couldn't, you know he's a fresh Spider-Man that hasn't been trained or really gotten used to his powers as well. So I mean that's how a lot of the movie runs. It's really cool seeing you know. Miles Morales with this older Peter Parker who's kind of in the dumps a little bit uh, who gets, you know, starts kind of kind of mentoring uh, Miles because he's kind of the most <clears throat> veteran Spider-Man of the whole group. <coughs> uh, excuse me. Yeah, I know it's a Hulk cup. I don't have my Spider-Man cup. Uh, but, um, yeah, so... It's, it's cool to see uh, that teacher mentor, you know, going into effect in this movie and the whole way that Miles kind of starts to adapt, starts to learn his powers. Uh, you know, he's learning these new powers. He's going to this new school for the gifted. Um, and he's also dealing with, you know, issues with his father, issues with his mother, issues with his uncle and this giant you know spider multiverse is just collapsing onto his and it's it's a lot to deal with and i think the way that the film uh presents it how it runs the pace how it runs the story it's all done very well i think everything felt just at the right spot nothing felt too forced if at all forced really i mean everything felt natural as far as natural as you can get with an animated movie that you know runs at half the frames as most but uh yeah man the, the, the fight scenes are really cool the, i kind of want to see it in 3d because i feel like it's going to look really amazing in 3d um you know miles morales of course his his evolution of you know getting bit learning his powers and just you know becoming a spider-man uh is really great uh there is of course one scene that's uh, a little rough, uh, <laughs> kind of got me a little emotional when I was watching it, because, uh, this is, you know, Miles Morales is buying a Spider-Man costume, and <laughs> the store owner, the guy who's bringing him up, is Stanley, which is Stanley, uh, I think it's probably one of his last cameos, if not is his last cameo, uh, for at least Marvel movies, so, a little rough, you know, hearing Stanley after, you know, his passing, of course, and 
got to me a little bit. I think it got to a few other people in the audience too. It's just uh, what he says is pretty uh, pretty much the the circumstances of Miles buying a Spider Man costume and what Stan says and what's going on. It's just like, oh, like that was hard. Uh, <laughs> you know, luckily it wasn't too long and it wasn't as painful as it definitely could be. But man, that that was a little rough. <laughs> And that was pretty early on in the movie. I think that was probably the first half an hour, maybe 40 minutes in. Um, but, man, uh, getting on to happier stuff. It is uh, a Spider-Man movie, nonetheless. Lots of quips, lots of action, lots of fighting, lots of, you know, interesting improvisation. Especially with all the different Spider-Man, seeing them, how, you know, they fight and everything. It's just amazing. <laughs> and, of course, I did see this in Dolby. Cinema, Dolby, Dolby Atmos uh, theaters. <laughs> they have an AMC and some other places, but yeah, man, I definitely recommend it because you do get that better soundscape. You do get a better image quality, which this movie is beautifully colored, and I do like the choice that they went with as far as the designs of the characters, as far as using that old, you know, comic book style of the dot coloring, um, the focusing, the just everything about it, the whole, you know, even the frame rating that they used just felt awesome. <laughs> it just all worked out so well. It's just, you know, a damn near perfect, if not perfect movie, uh, which I'll probably see another couple times in the theater. So, yeah, man, that's all I can really say about it. Uh, definitely, you might want to bring some uh, tissues in. Because they might, there's a couple emotional scenes, and it, they might catch you off guard a little bit. Because you think, ah, oh, it's a Spider-Man movie. Well, yeah, it is, but not the person you think is gonna die. Which, of course, you know, Uncle Ben's always gonna die in a Spider-Man movie, but not quite this time. So definitely see it worth every penny. How I would definitely give this a ten. Um, really nothing I could say bad about it because, like I said, the design choice, the concept that they used, the whole frame rating, the, everything just worked perfectly. And honestly, I think it wouldn't have been as interesting or as good if it was done traditionally with the smooth frame rating or with the you know, regular coloring and stuff like that. Like I think that was its biggest uh, advantage to compared to all these other Spider-Man movies and everything. So it just, everything just worked out so well. Uh, the music is amazing. I mean, it's better than, like, Black Panther's soundtrack, it's, which was pretty good. Uh, so I think Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse might be uh, the top Marvel movie for the year. And I hope it gets an award or something at the you know, Academy Awards and stuff because it deserves something. Something. <laughs> I mean, it needs something. It needs, I don't care what it is. I just need it needs something. Um, so yeah, so can't recommend it anymore. But next week probably gonna be another double feature. Uh, a little bit up in the air of what movie I want to see first because next week I got Aquaman and Bumblebee. Aquaman being an interesting movie because director. Of Fate uh, Fast and Furious is directing it, and trailers are looking okay, but I don't know. I, I got to see it on the big screen. When I saw the trailer on the big screen, it looked good, but when I see it online, it doesn't quite work as well. But uh, gonna be interesting. Uh, definitely seeing Bumblebee though. I man, all these early reviews are just spoiling me too much. I missed out on seeing it extra early last week. So I'm just going to see it like everybody else on Thursday night. But, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I feel I feel like Bumblebee is going to be the better movie than Aquaman. But I got to see what the timings are because I definitely want to see a double feature again next week. So stay tuned for that. Uh, for anyone interested if I'm going to see Mary, the new Mary Poppins movie, no. <laughs> 
it it honestly the the, the return of Mary Poppins just it looks bad. I I mean it looks like it's a remake, but it's not a remake. It's a sequel, but it's just I don't know. It just has it just lost its luster all completely and. Um, these live action remakes and sequels, like this, is kind of rarely hitting hit and miss on these things. So, not gonna see it, even though you know I do have the free movie passes and stuff. But I, I honestly don't waste my time watching it. So, Return of Mary Poppins, nope, not seeing it. So, don't be expecting that. But the next time, guys, later.